What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is the locker room week seven of the APA, the San Francisco Giantes team building for the Philadelphia Soul Dew, coached by Ultra Player. Uh, we are, uh, guys, you, you hear me say this, but you only hear me say it when it's honestly true. It's not a great matchup for me, so you're going to be looking at some questionable curveball sets because in situations like that in the draft league format you kind of got to do it uh, you've got to identify threats you've got to look at ways that you can try and overcome them and a lot of that is present situations that are question marks to your opponent and pray that they don't make the decisions they need to make that would take away advantage from you. So you need to try and generate advantage through a lot of your sets so my build is non-standard which is not unusual for monotype building anyway and you know what like i i know that by drafting mono you put yourself into these situations a lot so and the dragon gym the deeper i go with it the more i realize uh, the degree to which the snipes that uh that at the time i didn't necessarily think were such a huge deal really did hurt me i'm starting to feel it a lot right now uh, lack of priority, lack of uh, hazard options, really wanted some additional typing options, and just in general a lot of things missing, uh, but I've tried to work with what I got. You can see the six mod I'm bringing over there, I'm going to talk about them in detail right after I talk about my opponents, 11 drafted, which are right above me. As always, I'm doing the tiering situation that I always like to do. Uh, we have Tapu Fini, Mew, Mega Aerodactyl, Jolteon, Gengar, Hippowdon, Guzzlord, Snorlax, Durant, Rapidash, and Virizion. So, uh, as in my general tiering order as I do, there's just no way that he doesn't bring Tapu Fini. Uh, and I think it's like, if he could be, <laughs> if she could be in a tier on her own, like right above it, uh, she would be because... Why would you not bring Misty Terrain against a Dragon team? Any of your grounded Pokemon, instantly Dragon is just gone. So I've my stab has been turned into a liability, uh, which is huge. And um, a common way to get around things walling you, because if you know that I'm bringing a lot of Dragon, another thing you could do is just try and wall it, is to uh, try and toxic things and get Whittle damage so that you can use coverage moves. And I can't even do that in Misty Terrain either. So Misty Terrain really hurts the Dragon Gym, like, obviously, but it really does it a lot. And uh, I've had to try and make as many efforts as possible to try and get around that. It's been tough, I'm not gonna lie, not gonna lie, but we'll get to that in a second. Mew is so versatile, packs Dazzling Gleam, packs Ice Beam, that's another big thing, guys. His team has shockingly good speed matchup against me. It has Ice Beam and Dazzling Gleam or Moonblast coverage on four incredibly likely mons, that's the fairy typing, and ice, decent ice options on nine of the eleven, so uh, another reason why. <laughs> Why well, I'm I really I looked at this I'm gonna be honest I seriously contemplated forfeiting just because I didn't think it was a good use of my time, but then I talked myself out of it. I said, Geo, don't be a little bitch. Uh, you, got, you got to do the fight because I know what I get myself into when I draft mono. It's situations like this where it's like that's a really good option against me, and you learn from it. Um, Dragon Gym is not one I did a lot of back when my channel was all gym leader battles. I don't know. I, I did. A, I think I did it once or twice, maybe on Battle Spot, rank Battle Spot. But I, I like it's a tough one. It really is, and I'm I'm starting to see that a lot more now, uh, especially because I didn't draft particularly well for this one anyway. So. Uh, I, I'm gonna get into this battle. I'm gonna do it. Mew is gonna be a toughie. It really is. Uh, so much it could do. It's hard to predict, which puts a lot of advantage back in his uh, sense. Yeah, on his side of the field. Base speed 100 is good. It um, the only thing I outspeed it with is Latios, and it speed ties with Flygon and Salamence. So uh, I don't. It could be bulky. It could be difficult for me to take down. Lots of options it has to spread things like Willow. If it wants to, uh, it could do a lot of things. It could be Stallbreaker. Tons of options. Who knows what it'll end up doing, but I think there's a really high likelihood it comes. And then Mega Arrow, just because it's blazing fast, gets Ice Fang, uh, Tough Claws boosted, 
very much a huge threat that needs to be played around. There's uh, several mons on my team who are Dragon Dancers who won't out... Several mons. There's a mon on my team who's a Dragon Dancer who won't outspeed it at plus one. So uh, it removes some Scarf options just so fast and very strong. Very good matchup against me. Um, doesn't even necessarily need the ice coverage for some of the mons that it can hit with uh, its stab. Moving on to the next, like the top row, like if, if he doesn't bring one of those, I am truly shocked. Uh, the next row are all mons that provide an excellent an excellent option and with its either speed, offenses, or defenses, and they have the coverage they need. So Jolteon, of course, learns um, Dazzling Gleam and can pack Hidden Power Ice, possibly both. Uh, base speed 130, which matches up incredibly well against me, outspeeds everything. Could also learn Shadow Ball, so it would outspeed and have something super effective for the Latios, which is stronger than the Hidden Power Ice. Gengar, um, same situation, speed tying with Latios at 110. Uh, so speed tying with my fastest Mon. Gets Shadow Ball, learns Dazzling Gleam. Um, so a great option is there. Also learns Sludge wave or bomb so it could potentially use that to if it if he believes that i'm bringing mega altaria and then we've got the hippowdon which is bulky enough to try and take on some things that have gotten a dragon dance and maybe even two up against me uh, and it also packs ice fang one thing we i don't know why i'm getting this vibe but i'm seriously thinking that there's a good chance he runs uh, max HP, max attack, adamant banded with Ice Fang because that thing would easily 1v1 tons of the physical threats on my team. I, I don't know why I'm getting the impression that that's like a really likely bring, but I feel like it is. So I'll be on the lookout for figuring out what set I think he is on the Hippowdon pretty early. Guzzlord in the next tier here. Guzzlord is interesting because... Sorry, my phone wasn't silenced. Guzzlord's interesting because benefits very heavily from its own, the terrain set up by the Tapu Fini. Because Dragon being one of the um, premier moves to hit him with super effective and that I have on my team, uh, him being grounded means he's less affected by that. Mega Altaria, um, would very much scare this guy out and so i don't know that he the reason i have him not in one of the higher tiers even though you know being a bulky dragon that could easily run specs and oko one of my mons with draco meteor even though that's very possible maybe even likely i think just by nature of the risk of mega altaria coming means that he doesn't end up doing that so i think there's a good chance that uh, Guzzlord, Guzzlord has been down tier just because of how obvious that is as an answer to it. So I don't necessarily know that Guzzlord comes, but it's bulky, so it'll be difficult for me to take out like in one hit. And he's got Draco Meteor, which I don't have a ton of things outside of Mega Altaria that could really handle that. Uh, like a Spex Draco, that is. So that's my thought process there. Uh, maybe Snorlax should have been in front of Guzzlord. I think Snorlax is, is a very solid option to bring. Uh, bulky, difficult to take on for some of my other mons, especially my especially defensive mon or especially offensive mons. Um, really good switch in. Could run a variety of sets depending on what he wants it to be doing for him. Uh, like it could be. Maybe it's just an annoying, bulky Assault Vest set just to try and take a hit and deliver some hits back. Uh, it learns Ice Punch, so it's got the coverage it needs for a majority of the mons on my team. It could be a Curse set. Um, it could be... Maybe it just goes Banded. Who knows? Like Snorlax can take a hit and give a hit. And uh, the way the Dragon Gym has sort of panned out in the past is very all or nothing. And so it those type of mons those bulky type of mons you can also dish a hit back are pretty damaging to those kind of ideas durant um steel typing which has its benefits uh not undefensive very fast 109 base speed could be it could come but there are so many other options that are faster 
Uh, it does not have ice or fairy coverage, so I'm not sure where the value is there. The steel typing, I guess, could be good for Altaria, but you have better Altaria answers, in my opinion. I just, I just don't see it. I, uh, to me, it seems less likely to bring. Rapidash is in the same light. 105 base speed, not incredibly strong offensively. Coverage, it's got some stuff, but it's not particularly well matched up against me. You got Mega Horn, Drill Run, things like that. Wild Charge, it's not. It just does none of it. Like really screams that it's a particularly good bring. Uh, does not have. Um, ice or fairy coverage, so I am pretty pretty good there. So to me, it doesn't strike me as the likely bring. It could come as a willow set, maybe just to try and neuter something. I guess we'll have to see. But to me, like it, if if that mon comes or if Durant comes, there's something there. Like he's got a set going on. There has to be a reason, uh, and it's possibly one I haven't seen yet. So I'll just have to kind of. Try and figure it out as we go along. Virizion, grass fighting, like, where's the benefit against my team? It would, I guess the fighting stab would be okay against Drampa. Grass is not good, particularly against any of the mons on my team. It's, uh, it's not particularly offensive. Yeah, it's got a good speed tier, 108, so it matches up kind of well there. Yeah, it has some support mon options available to it. Kind of especially bulky, but there's just so many mons on my squad that completely threaten it. Um, Latios comes to mind as an amazing switch into it, even if it's trying to lock in some coverage options against it. Uh, Latios outspeeds it and takes it on anyway. Uh, same thing with, say, the Salamence, although of course it could just run HP Ice. Anything could just run HP Ice against the Salamence. Even the things I said that didn't have ice coverage or whatever could do it. Uh, so that's just, I just, I don't see it. But again, if he does bring it, that's because he's got an idea there. And uh, I'll have to kind of play around that. But the, the bottom three seem less likely. And so he, he'll have a trick up his sleeve if he brings them. I just don't see it as being likely. So uh, as usual, like the top, it doesn't necessarily mean the first six Pokemon you see are the, like, those are the ones he's bringing. I think those are the most likely brings. But I don't think it's super likely that he brings, say, both Gengar and Jolteon. Some of the weird feelings I'm getting, like maybe slightly unusual sets, if Jolteon comes, I'm fairly certain it's Scarfed. And the reason I would think that is as a check in case I were to get multiple Dragon Dances up on one of my setup mons, um, because that way it still outspeeds them. Because a lot of my mons are kind of, even like at max speed, they'll get a dragon dance up and maybe that's enough to outspeed the uh, the Mega Aerodactyl, but like, or maybe I'll need two in order to do that. But in order to outspeed a Scarf Jolteon, I need to hit 302. And that's like, you have to be max speed jolly and get to plus two in order to do that um, for something like um, the Kamo'o. Uh, and I got some more numbers uh, to show you when I go over the team, which we might as well just do right now. So let's have a look at the team builder uh, and just kind of go through things a little bit quickly here. We're 13 minutes in. Just this is one of the weird things. I knew right away this was going to be a really hard because the first thing I do when I team build is inst I build a, um, a speed calc for myself just to kind of see where all the speed tiers are lying. And instantly I was like, oh, no, this guy has all but four mons that speed tie or beat my fastest 10. So I was like, that's not good, first of all. Tons of support options, tons of coverage options, uh, and of course, Tapu Fini. So like right away, I was that was the instinctual moment where I was like, I should not invest a lot of time on this because it's. I'm very sure this is gonna be an L. And I was like, no, you gotta build, you gotta still try, and. As a result, I ended up spending more time team building for something I'm still pretty confident is going to be a loss, but I want to I want to do it. I want to challenge myself. That's the point of doing mono, and so I really have to do this. So that's <laughs> funny thing here is that my team builder, which should have been shorter, which is just, yeah, this is hard. Here's some weird sets, and hopefully I can do it, uh, has turned into me talking at length about 
a lot of the challenges I, I'm confident that I'm going to try and overcome. So, let's talk about the Mons. Starting off with, we have the Blue One, Gramps, Bro Mo O, Poisony Boy, Mad Manson Remix. Starting off with the Blue One, he's Electrium Z, Thunder, Psyshock, Calm Mind, and Roost. Um, Latios can... Setup is the wrong word, but can pretty conveniently and confidently get a Calm Mind off against either the Mew or the Feeny. Both of things I think are very likely brings, um, because after one Calm Mind, I won't be getting two hit KO'd by Ice Beam or Dazzling Gleam from either of those Mons. Um, I say Dazzling Gleam, Moon Blast from the Feeny. Uh, I'll be able to roost it off. Feeny does have the act does have access to Haze and Mew does have access to Taunt, but we kind of learn um, and scout in the process and I'll likely get the Roost off before that anyway. Uh, Electrium Z's uh, Thunder, uh, I'll have to calculate more, I don't want to do it now on, on the camera, but uh, during the game I'll have to calculate either Electrium Z Thunder does Oko Feeny without a boost or it's like a guarantee after one boost. I, I can't remember. I think it's that it's like one of those weird calcs. It's like 89 to 102 against a max HP. I think no special defense Feeny. Um, I think it's like it's a pretty decent chance to Oko it from no boost. And then if I get a boost, I'm just I'm setting them off to the races. Latios needs to be the primary choice I have available at my disposal to try and take on that Tapu Fini. It's not the only option I have, but it's really important that it tries to be the main one uh, because it's kind of designed for it. It's got max speed just because I really needed that investment. I needed the confidence that I at least outspeed something and can uh, reliably potentially speed tie with the Gengar. Uh, part of me is wondering, like, I don't think he'll bring the Gengar, maybe just out of fear that he'll introduce speed tie situation. Unless maybe, again, it's Scarfed or something. So, uh, Psyshock, I want to stab. It's relatively good coverage. This set is walled by Guzzlord, uh, which is unfortunate, but maybe I could pop off a Calm Mind or two, survive a Draco, roost off, and then be okay. Um, a lot of these sets are designed very hard around likely brings uh, with a coverage or two spliced on the team for the potential brings but ultimately i've pretty much designed my team to be a little bit weak to the virizion rapidash and durant it wasn't fully intentional it just happened that way because i was very specific like this has a job to do and I can't play every Mon like, you're a Dragon and Psychic Mon, you're a Dragon and Normal Mon, you're a Dragon and Fighting Mon, because the, the coverage options are going to be more important to me than the stab. And so this one is the Mon that will take on, potentially, the Mega Aerodactyl. I can take a hit from Mega Arrow, I can knock it out with Thunder, I can knock out the Feeny with Thunder. Uh, getting a boosted Psyshock off against a lot of things is a good set. The Mew, I'm not amazing against it, but I can probably Calm Mind up against it, potentially Roost against it. Just gotta hope that it doesn't have uh, T-Wave, because then it's maybe more likely to beat me 1v1. Again, this, it's not a bad choice for him to pack T-Wave on it, and if he does, then he might be neutering me. A lot of this is gonna come down to, I. It, normally this is a situation that introduces itself in a battle. I will set my, I'll put myself in a position to potentially win and your opponents can still take that away from you. I'm going to put myself in a position to potentially take down one of the biggest threats to me, but uh, there's no guarantee I can do it because say I go for Calm Mind on turn one as he clicks Moon Blast against me with Feeny, just introducing a scenario. Um, and it does quite a lot of damage, so I might want to roost it off only to get hazed right away and then we kind of, we learned something today, right? Uh, maybe I click Calm Mind again as he either hazes again or Moon Blasts again, or maybe he switches. Who knows? But like we're introducing scenarios here, right? So he could just do that and then maybe my set's not as good as I thought it was. But I need to introduce situations that put me in a position to win if he either makes a mistake or team builds differently than he needed to for the sets that I brought. So again, Full transparency on the mindset here. I am bringing a lot of sets that could be hard walled uh, and could be problematic uh, for him if he didn't bring the right mods. So maybe I have to get quite a lot of things right here. Let's move on. We got Gramps, 
Choice Spec, Berserk, Hyper Voice, Energy Ball, Thunder, Focus, Blast. He's just a beast. Hyper Voice will deal with almost everything I really need it to. He does have a Rock type. Uh, the Rock type won't appreciate a Thunder. Uh, and Energy Ball and Focus Blast are pretty safe clicks against it and some of its opponents too. Thunder is very good against the Feeny, but of course he does have Mons that would love to take a Thunder, like the Hippowdon and the Jolteon, and so uh, I could just go for the Energy Ball instead. Thunder is an Oko on the Feeny, Energy Ball is not, but it's also a safer click if he's like, oh the Thunder's coming, let me go into Hippowdon or something else. Um, good chance he's got an Assault Vester on the team, we'll have to wait and see who that is, but Hyper Voice, pretty good click. Um, I'm seriously considering just leading with Drampa, just trying to claim a kill or some very heavy damage on something pretty early. Um, because, you know, Drampa's not very bulky. Like, it's not awful, but it's just not great. Um, the speed tier we set it at is so that it outspeeds uh, a slightly creeping Hippowdon. And then, of course, if it's a max speed Hippowdon, well, then nothing I can really do about that. Focus Blast is there because I'd like to have something for the Snorlax. It also just happens to hit the Guzzlord, which is very useful for me. I don't I wouldn't love to lock myself into Thunder or Focus Blast purely because uh, he has resists or immunity or he has immunities on the team. Uh, Berserk would be really nice because I'll get outsped by quite a lot of the things on his team actually, and but not a lot of things can Oko him. That's like the beauty of my uh, of the defensive nature that I uh, the defensiveness of this Pokemon. Not great, but just barely enough to not get Oko'd by a lot of things, uh, including a Moonblast from a modest Max Feeny. It'll do a lot, but it'll actually activate my Berserk to the point that Hyper Voice will kill. So I don't really need to over predict there. So, goal of Gramps is maybe just lead with it and try and get something off early. Uh, at least that's one of the hopes. Moving on, we have Bromo O. He's a scarfed Bromo O. Bulletproof, just because I think it makes the most sense in this situation. Could potentially help against Gengar if it has uh, Shadow Ball. Um, there's a ball move, like a. Or, or, or a move that has, like, ball or something in it that is not covered by this. And I forget what it is. Maybe it's Aura Sphere, but I, I I always forget which one it is. And I hope it's not Sludge Bomb or Shadow Ball, because I'm kind of counting on Bromo O to be good against those, but Sludge Wave is probably more likely anyway if he does bring the Gengar. Uh, anyway, uh, Close Combat, Poison Jab, Earthquake, Stealth Rock with the Choice Scarf. Big thing here was I really want rocks. I really, really want rocks. We do have a lot of mons that are kind of counting on getting Okos or setting up and getting an Oko. It would be nice to have a, just a, that little bit of chip because there's tons of times, tons of calcs where Gramps Gramps will do like, you know, like 99%, like 89 to 99. And it would just be great if I just had 12.5% on something. You know what I mean? Like we get very close lots of times with lots of these calcs. So I really want rocks. Bromo is outsped by almost everything, almost everything. And so I really needed the speed tier uh, with the speed investment. I have 149 and a choice scarf. I outspeed everything that's not scarfed. So I will almost certainly get it off. Um, close Combat, Poison Jab, Earthquake are pretty decent coverage options. He has so many lead options available to him. You know, he could, like, lead the Jolteon just because why not get, like, a quick Volt Switch off. He could lead Hippowdon to try and bluff that he's not offensive and then hit me with something hard. Or for Rocks, he could lead Aerodactyl to try and get Mega Arrow off turn one. Uh, and that could be his rocker or to try and scare me out. Lots of options available to him there. I did have Aqua Tail on it at one point. I removed it for Earthquake last minute because since I outspeed the Jolteon and the Gengar with my Scarf, I could potentially uh, scare them out um, if, they, if they trust my bluff or they could fail to see it and just get Earthquake and O-Code right away. So I did make that last minute change. Aquatail would be good because it would actually do a lot more to the uh, Aerodactyl, but Close Combat will do a lot too, and so it might be worth it for that. Moving on, we have Poisony Boy Assault Vest. This is kind of my dedicated, like, if 
Tapu Fini comes in in a weird situation, and I kind of don't like the situation I'm in against it. This is my switch into it. Draco Meteor, Sludge Wave, Scald, Focus Blast. Now, I know I said Dragon's not particularly valuable for me in this matchup, but it it's not without its merits. This is a good answer. This is a good check. This is a good check to a Specs Guzzlord. And... Um, even if those are grounded mons, Draco Meteor, uh, it could also be non-grounded mons like the Mega Arrow, and it might be nice to click the Draco. And also, Misty Terrain's not necessarily going to be up 100% of the time, so I felt like it, as an adaptability mon, could be useful to have Draco on it. And so it's on it. I think Scald and Focus Blast kind of cover the things that I need it to where available. This thing's not necessarily walled, per se, by anything. Like, it only has neutral coverage at least for at least everything, but it's it's not necessarily walled. Uh, I'm very slow, but I'm pretty bulky and can take hits really well. Um, I think it's a six-hit KO is what Moonblast is from a non-offensive Feeny. Could be offensive, who knows. Uh, moving on, we have Mad Mentz. Uh, he is an Aqua Tail, Crunch, Brick Break, Dragon Dance, Moxie, Focus, Sash, Salamence. That was a mouthful. Very weird set, I know. The thing is, I just don't see Mentz getting a Dragon Dance off without a Focus Sash. And one of the things I'm kind of hoping is maybe I introduce a scenario where I'm in against a Mon who potentially through scouting I've learned is not an amazing maybe not even able to two hit KO maybe a scarf mon locked into the wrong move like got a kill with something else confirmed a scarf but locked into something that won't two hit KO me I'll be able to get a dragon dance off on the switch I'll be able to get a dragon dance off on um, the attack that they presume would kill me and then hopefully at plus two after some rocks damage has come around uh, I'll be able to sweep problems with this i don't have a defogger and if defog goes off then uh, and if he gets rocks up then uh the focus ash is useless that is something i already know is a very high risk i'll do what i can to try and dissuade there being rocks as options but it can't necessarily be done so all i can do is hope that i play in a way to discourage rocks if they get up, the Focus Sash is not very useful, and that's unfortunate. There's lots of games where your item isn't necessarily useful. I don't really have any particular way to bring it back to him, unless maybe I remix onto one of his mons that, I don't know, maybe he's got Wish on Jolteon or something, and I can potentially get that off and pass to him. But if rocks get up, uh, the Focus Sash kind of becomes less useful, and... Um, in those circumstances, maybe I try and get Mentz in early, uh, try and get a Dragon Dance off and weaken something instead of trying to sweep with it. You can, I kind of just have to weigh it. Its speed tier is, you know, it's 100, which is not bad, but that only speed ties with Mew and outspeeds Finny, Hippowdon, Guzzlord, and Snorlax, so, and lots of those are mods that I don't think are super likely to come. Aqua Tail, Crunch, Brick Break are good coverage against the things that I need the Mentz to beat. After it gets to plus one or something, Aqua Tail is the best way I have for the Mega Arrow. At plus one, I do outspeed Mega Arrow. Um, dinging 152 as my speed. Um, getting to plus two does put me at uh, above 222. Um, yeah, 228. Um, and of course... I could be jolly here to guarantee that I would speed tie at least with a max speed Mew, but uh, I needed the power because there's a lot of things that I miss Oko's on. Uh, even at plus two, some of his bulky mons I'll, I'll miss out without the stealth rocks, and so uh, I had to go with Adamant for that. Uh, I do expose myself to some outspeed risks, fortunately not from anything less than the base 100s, so I potentially forego beating Mew in a speed race or a speed tie opportunity, but I'm still outspeeding the next fastest Pokemon, which is Tapu Fini, even if it's Tim and Max. And finally, Remix. Um, this time I am running Hidden Power Ground as the potential HP options, because I think the most likely mons to pack Hidden Power 
are the Gengar and the Jolteon, both of which are weak to Hidden Power Ground, and both of which present possible switch-in opportunities that Ground would, at the very least, not be completely immune to. So, uh, I felt like Ground was the best option for that, uh, and... Not much else to say about that. It's choice scarfed uh, because I want some potential speed control again from Remix. Bromo O's speed control is not really speed control. It's just a uh, let's get some rocks up with this and then potentially let's have an attack option. One thing to note about Bromo O um, with the set I have, I do not Oko the Snorlax, but I do about 90% to it. And so if he was trying to go for some like. Curse shenanigans against me. It's it's not gonna pan out for him. Even if he got the curse off beforehand, I would two hit KO it if it went for curse on the next turn. It would need to be potentially uh, trying to recycle against me, or maybe a resto chesto might work. Uh, but it it'll be difficult. The close combat will do pretty well, and then maybe I have the folk splash option from Gramps. Guys, there's a, there's a lot I need to be hopeful about here. A lot that I need to just hope he's kind of just saying, eh, forget it, I'll just go offensive on everything and just try and click Ice Beam and Dazzling Gleam a lot. I need to hope that he underestimates me. I do need to hope that. I need to hope that he builds pretty basic and just kind of go from there. That's got to be my hope. Uh, I know he's a good player. He's 4-2 and two right now, whereas I'm 2-4. and four. Um... You know, the Psychic Gym, I was able to go 2-2, two and two, and I think I could have gone 3-1. and one. The Dragon Gym, I, I came close. <laughs> I came close twice, uh, losing out due to a miss and due to a uh, very good tech on a Scarf or Bombi. Uh, and I would have won in either of those other scenarios had those not been the case. But, you know, we this is the game we play. I'm just doing my best to present situations. Dragon Dance can be dangerous uh, if you're not prepared for it. I'm sure he'll be prepared for it, but I've got to try and make some moves to try and get around that. So this is the team I'm bringing. Uh, what do you guys think of my potential curveballs and the sets that I'm bringing? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you guys for sticking around for this very long episode of The Locker Room. I hope you found it informative. As always, my name is Gym Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you guys next time.